All right, I want to give you guys a heads up that um, unfortunately, um, well, we'll not be able to do maybe possible. I don't think we're gonna be able to do do a dual stream because you end up hearing me um, in that regard. Um, you won't be able to hear people, unfortunately. So it's not going to work out. Maybe there's some kind of setting. I'll have to, unfortunately, end this stream. We will see you, though, um, on X. You're more than welcome to join us on X, Twitter. Yeah, I thought I had it figured out, and I did. But the problem is when you host it, you hear yourself. I myself hear myself. Remember, I was telling, telling you guys and so on. And I also don't want it to be a situation where you hear me on both and it ruins the experience for people on Twitter, right? So, um, yeah, we don't we don't want that. Um, unfortunately, yes, I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, let me see here. I think that's strange. Hold on. Yeah. Yep, yeah, because as soon as I go to share uh, the thing here, and jump into my own Twitter space, right? Then you, I'll end up hearing it. So it'd be a good experience for you guys, right? But unfortunately, I have no way unless I just mute my own headphones. But then when we go to the part where I want to share it for you guys, obviously there's going to be an echo, which kind of sucks. Um, I don't know. You know what? Let me see. You know what? We might be able to do it. Well, what, what happened? Yeah, so like right now, I mean, it's fine, right? Um, you know, I'm going to try something. We might be able to get through this. I'm going to basically, uh, when it's myself talking, um, let me just get through it. So what I want to do is I'm going to make, you know, I'll do the, the presentation and so on and, and share what we got. We got, we're going to start here soon. I apologize for all the new people. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm going to share the screen, which is the live Twitter feed. And then I'm going to literally mute my headphones so I don't hear myself that way. I'm going to try it. See what happens with that. Um, and uh, basically go from there. Let's see how this works out. Might work. Might not work. I don't know. We'll see what goes on. Hold on a second. All right. Um, I'm going to go to XXIs for the Twitter space real quick. Uh, you got a lot of tweets here, buddy. All right. No, it's okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to do start listening. Guys, for the Twitter space real quick. All right. I'm going to mute myself real quick. Oh, you got a lot of tweets here, buddy. All right. I think that's yeah, my bad. No, it's okay. Um, um, give me a second. All right. So I'm going to do start listening. All right. So, yeah, let's just try that for a minute. All right. I'm going to mute myself real quick. And then, all right, I think that's going to do the trick. Let's just see um, sure. all the screens. So let me stop this for a second. I'm going to share like everything. That way you guys can see the whole experience. I'm sure, screen. I'm sure, tab audio. Let's see if this works. Bear with me. I apologize for the delay. Um, let's see. So. Share absolutely everything. Entire screen. There we go. All right. So there's that. Let me see if you can see all this. And let me see if you can see all this. So for those who are tuning in, okay, on YouTube, I'm going to see it for myself real quick on YouTube. I think I could view this. Hopefully you can hear me literally on YouTube now. And if you can't, tell me, let me know. Either way, if we, you can't, can't hear me, well, then we're simply going to just start here soon because we need to. So, um, let me just blow this up real quick. Yep. Seems like you guys can hear me on YouTube. So, this is going to work out. That's a miracle. All right. Um, let's go from there. So, let's start things off. Obviously, I want to welcome you guys. You know, I want to thank you guys, obviously, for being here. I think it's awesome that you're here. Uh, really, really do appreciate you being here. And we do have some topics, obviously, to get into. Um, let me see about pulling up this up real quick. So, number one, um, 
I'm going to show you my screen right here. And basically speaking, let's talk utility. ISO 222, QNT, XRP, believe it or not, solo. You may be thinking, why do I have solo tagged in here? What is up with that? Uh, there's a reason for that. And, of course, Jasmine is an ISO 222, but it's something we talk about a lot. Um, so we definitely want to talk about some of the hot topics. Um, there was some a big bombshell, I guess you could say. I should say bombshell, but I think it's significant in regards to um, some Ripple XRP news that was dropped this morning. Some other outlets reported, some didn't. But we're going to get into all of it. Um, we're going to actually start things off with a little bit of the QMT. Other outlets reported. Oh, cool. I'm just double checking the security. So I'm going to go around before we get into this and basically thank some newcomers. So, yes. Thank you for joining our community. Thank you for being here. Um, I, if you don't know who I am, I am Max of Maximus Crypto. This is my brand new channel. Um, I have an older channel, and yeah, looking forward to just plugging away, grinding away, giving you guys great content. Um, but nonetheless, before we get into what we have tonight, we're going to welcome and thank XXI Gaming for being here. So, Fud, Brian Riley, Tim Shea, Mayor Crypto, Crypto Commissioner, representing the 589th. We got uh, Patrick Collier here. Thank you so much for being here, Patrick Collier. Uh, Boomer F and Sooner, Jonathan Andrew, Blackwood, Stump Rider, Eddie T 2.0. Wow. Eddie T, I was wondering what happened to you. So glad to see you back. Um, I asked around about you for a while, so I'm so happy to see you, man. Guys, give a dab to the OG of the OGs, Eddie T. Um, another guy we have here, I don't know, your name gets chopped off. I think it's, it might say Daddy Crypto. I don't know. I apologize. Uh, welcome. Let's also welcome Bob and um, JG, who literally looks like my friend Matt Coberly in real life with that picture. You look like the literally like doppelganger in that old picture. That's funny. Um, jumping back to YouTube for a, br a brief moment, what I'm going to do is I am going to highlight some, um, you know, uh, comments over here just to see if there's anybody that's not from YouTube. Uh, Brittany, I know you guys see a bunch of mirrors, but this is the format we have to do for the brief moment. Please smash the like, especially if you're on uh, YouTube, and I do appreciate being here. You got to keep in mind, this is the first time we did something like this, a dual stream. See how it works. Uh, River's up in here. I don't know if you're on Twitter. Um, just learned about this at, uh, from XSpace earlier today. Awesome, Jonathan. That's great. Um, just recognize that some people, again, from uh, YouTube. Greetings all. Um, thank you so much, Jonathan support gt i don't think he's on twitter but welcome welcome um brian riley's obviously here on twitter unknown scorpion glad to have you here tsr says no youtube but you know obviously we're getting this thing going on now yamaha pacifica great great to have you um rombo people looking to xrpl upgrade um i saw the thing you posted from what i read rombo uh by default that is set to off so I don't know if that's just a flood campaign to maybe scare some people. Not from you, obviously. Uh, but yeah, you know, we all should be protective about that. So thank you for that update. Uh, and welcome to Rombo. Um, I'm just trying to see if more people. Edward Vincent, obviously you're on Twitter. And we're at the bottom. So let's get back into what we have. And we're going to go ahead and share some tabs for you guys. Uh, I already put on the link for people who are on the X space. Um, so you should see it right now. And basically speaking, you know, this is something I want to talk about real quick. It is something that needs to be addressed. And if you're wondering just what the heck is that, basically this whole thing in regards to this ongoing FUD campaign from certain people from the Chainlink community. And unfortunately, we, we, we see these things. I mean, this next one is obviously from the, the guy from last time. Um, not construction tree that he's right. He's a great guy, but um, from people like um, Clean Link Chad, for instance, right? I don't mean any disrespect to him. So some people want to be maxi plus stuff, but you know, when you see crypto tribalism, it makes you wonder, like, why is that? You know, why do people really want to um, do that? So I'm doing a full screen layout on this particular one, and let me pull out that comment from Edward. I think it's Edward, right? But, um, just need to pull it off. So it's this right here, and you know it states there's over 200 trillion in bank deposits globally, and all of this will be making its way on chain via tokenized deposits. 
on our live show, we talk about some of these things in regards to tokenized deposits. Um, you always obviously hear a lot of talk about Larry Fink when it comes to tokenized deposits. Um, not just tokenized deposits, but you know, uh, the tokenization of long securities, you know, putting on blockchain, DLT, and so on. It says QNT is working with the two biggest players of them all on tokenized deposits. Um, and so, you know, that's something to be said, right? So what is all this all about? You know, like it says, the BIS and the Bank of England. We're going to go ahead and play this. Um, in fact, on this particular one, I have to share it as a tab um, just to show you what I'm talking about. But for those of you guys who are on Crypto X, um, basically speaking, you will see this. It's linked up, so you can watch it on your own if you choose to do so. And let's go ahead and share this also for the YouTubers. Um, we're just going to go ahead and play this. But I'm going to comment on this here in a bit. And if anything, watch it for yourself, right? Give yourself a little bit of that education. Um, this one is three minutes and 47 seconds. Um, just kind of take a brief pause, especially if you're just from X. It is in the link. Give yourself a chance to watch this. Hear it from Gilbert Erdan himself. Yeah. Uh, Gilbert, if we go back to your um, the BIS flower, which you mentioned um, a, a while ago, it strikes me that a combination of a CBDC and tokenized deposits feels a lot more like the existing system with a central bank currency available to selected players. And on top of that is built a huge pyramid of, of commercial bank money. Am I right to be thinking that is why central banks and other regulators might favor tokenized deposits over stable coins? It's more like the world they know and feel comfortable controlling. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, from, from our experience, we, we've just spent the last year working with the BIS and the Bank of England, um, providing the tech for, for Project Rosalind, and we learned a lot from that. And the main takeaway was, why is a tokenized deposit tokenized liability or a CBDC different to a normal pounds, to a normal euro, to a normal dollar. And it really comes down to the core function of money today. It's, it's quite binary. It's a push and a pull. Uh, the messaging system behind it powering money is, is, is very binary. <laughs> it, there's not, not many things you can do with it. But once you have the, the foundational um, blockchain technology powering money, you can add conditions, logic, you know, programmability to, to do uh, different things with money, which you couldn't do before. And I think that's, that's what we're going to see is the, the, you know, the preference to move to a, a smarter form of money with more functions, more features to automate workflows, to process transactions um, based on conditions and logic and all these things to happen and then execute and settle. It's going to be a, a bit of a step change in money as we know it. So from, from the, the, the model that the BIS put out, there will be a CBDC within the jurisdiction and linked to that, you'll see um, regulated issuers being able to tokenize a deposit or a liability on their end and having that in the system because it's a faster form of money. It's a, it's a more feature rich form of money and it solves a lot of the friction and the pain points that we have today with correspondent banking, with settlement, treasury management, cash, um, limits you know all the friction that we have with with payment systems of today you 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 kind of evolve money to an, a, a new form and and you you overcome those barriers and you overcome the friction that we have just, oh, just before i let you go on on that point you've just made about correspondent banking for example um are you would it be your view that that tokenized deposits could be a more effective tool than stable coins in payments and i mean but i mean particularly cross-border payments but also domestic payments. And I raise cross-border payments because that's been a focus of uh, the regulation of stable coins, where in regulators have been very enthusiastic about stable coins has been that actually might make cross-border payments cheaper, faster, more transparent, and more accessible. So they've actually seen a role for them there. Can tokenized deposits fulfill that role as well? Um, yes, if, if the flow on both ends is tokenized deposits. So you're, you're settling uh, you're issuing and then you're from an acceptance perspective on, on the other end, um, if that's redeemed and then the deposits on the other end are cash or, or traditional money. Yeah, definitely. I mean, what, what we're seeing is uh, even, I think it was yesterday, the BIS came out with the unified ledger model where there's a layer to interconnect and interoperate different jurisdictions, tokenized money or CBDC can flow between this layer and then the settlements and acceptance can happen on both ends. So it is a new form 
of payment rail. It's a new model that, that we haven't had before, um, but we need to work on it and, and, and see where it goes.